So we're going to take another poll. So this is to your 22333 number. 22333 number. And we can even say this in general. What one step might you intentionally take to integrate an aspect of Molly's work into your mission work? But focusing in on your last conversation, what is that, whether it's Molly's work or Christine's work or what your conversation has been, what is one thing, intentional thing, that you or your table or both might do? Yes, Red? So they're talking at the table about the mental health work at Haven for Hope, and Doug's going to raise his hand right now. So y'all, when it's done, you need to meet with him, um, and he's working with the mental health action team with the faith-based initiative, and they can engage that. So, oh, I see things coming in on the poll. So mental health should be up there. Haven for Hope, one person, one day at a time. Connect, SA 2020 Health and Wellness Initiatives. Connect, listening, building assets, not deficits, promote high quality public schools, cross agency cooperation, integrate area churches, find your unique space to make change, identify what you do in your space, I can't read fast enough, collaborate, get more people to the table. We didn't reach even near 300. If every, all these seats were filled today, it would be 200. So while this is still going up there, if you haven't filled out that piece of paper in front of you yet, I invite you to do that because we're going to collect and we're going to draw from that pile that's handed in the other person who gets to go to lunch with the mayor. So you're going to hand those in pretty quick. Return to neighborhood and community schools is one reason we're asked you, invited you to sit in districts so you get to know each other. If you haven't taken names and phone numbers and stuff like that, you're probably going to want to do that. Maybe not today, but sometime next week you're going to go, man, I wish I had her phone number. And then you're going to email me, and I'm going to go, well, I don't know if I have it. <laughs> so help each other out. Get the numbers that you need. Conversations. I read a lot about partnerships, respect, collaborating, act locally. I'd encourage you to make these things as specific as you can. Like, so if you're talking about collaborate, who are you going to collaborate with when you leave this space? Think of one person that you've not collaborated with and you're going to now. Make these things specific. One here says amplify. How are you going to do that? What thing are you going to do to amplify? Meet with that council person. What are you going to call that person? Are you going to do that this afternoon? It takes a while to get a meeting with them. I gotta tell you, it takes a while. So take whatever you wrote up here and now make it even more specific. Specific meaning who, what, when, where, and how are you gonna do it? Flesh it out. Okay, so they're collecting those, which is great. Um, I really wanna honor your time. We said 11.30 and that's what we're doing. So we've got some more mission minutes and some things coming up, but I want to pick up on one of the things that Molly talked about, and that was civic engagement, voter turnout. Exactly on the opposite side of 281, about three minutes from here driving, is early voter registration at Lions Field. No matter what district you're in, you can go vote there right now. We all need to do our part. We need to vote. So I just wanted to say that. We mentioned compassion before. I'm going to invite the people who are on our Compassionate San Antonio Action Team to stand up. We've got a couple of them here. So if you have questions about it after, and they have developed with other experts in the field, a San Antonio Compassion Index tool. And I'm going to be emailing that all out to you. I'll send it to you. And it's a way to discover, as Mary reminded us, how we need to practice these things here. So it measures self-compassion, but it also measures how compassionate we are with others. 
So watch for that email. It's the Compassion Index tool. Um, look at that. The last one. Look, okay. it's even the biggest on the screen, which means more people said vote than anything. So we're all going to just make a little choo-choo train, right? On over to Lions Field. All right. Um, so, Gail, you want to go to the next slide? So this is our mission minute. So we're already here taking next steps. One of the next steps that I want to encourage you to take and I bet there's more than two people, but there are two people who came up to me, right? And one, since this started, and one came up to me and said, I specifically give a talk to people one-to-one -one and invited them to come here. And nine of them are here. One person who worked on nine people to come here. There is absolutely no reason this room, it holds 450. There's no reason we didn't have 450 people here, right? Uh, I had another person, though, come to me uh, who made an announcement yesterday at a gathering of faith leaders, and that person was frustrated because that person said, where are they? What does this mean? So I would encourage you to go to those people and be strong like Molly and ask the question, what does this mean? To that group of people, and why are they not here? Yes, sir. I would ask all of us to look around the room and each other. How much gray hair or lack of hair do you see? <laughs> we need to shift the demographic as well. Well, let's look at this. Anybody here who's under the age of 40, would you please stand? 40. <laughs> Under the age of 30, we have any look at that. So much like Molly would say, we need to affirm and celebrate, right? So thank you. Thank you, those under 30s and under 40s for being here. And yes, but we're also looking at our communications and how that that might help as well. Um, so some of our next steps collectively, Gil, the next one. Yes, people are going to be just shocked that we have this figured out. We've never had this figured out before. But the spring, summer, we do that together because San Antonio is not very good at showing up in the summer. Um, but it's the week before Memorial Day. So our spring, summer, 2018 convening is Tuesday, May 22nd, 1.30 to 4.30. It's all up there. People ask, well, you know, why are you meeting in the day? Well, we've met in the mornings. We've met in the evening. We've met at supper time. No, anyway, um, there is no perfect time, as you all know. So we're just going to keep moving it. And we keep moving it around the city so that you see other parts of the city. Wait till you see where we're going next. Wow. I used to go to church out where we're going next. I drove there the other day, and I'm like, what happened here? Amazing. So, we're going to meet the next time Pre-K for SA Training Center on Eisenhower Road. Very exciting place to go. And I'm going to invite our communication specialist. She's going to tell us a little bit about what we're going to be doing at that convening. Great. Right. Good morning. I'm Elizabeth Stevens. I'm a lifelong San Antonian. I left for about four years. Her grandfather was a mayor, by the way. He was. He was mayor of San Antonio a long time ago before I was born. And I left to go to Vanderbilt University in Nashville, Tennessee for four years and came straight back as fast as I could. I love being here. And I am also a StoryBrand certified guide and copywriter. So what I do is I work with nonprofits, organizations, brands to help them clarify their message. And some people come and say, well, you're just rebranding me or you're helping me with my creative messaging. And that is not what I do. So the human brain is made to do two things. It's made to survive and thrive, and it's made to conserve calories. So it's tasked with keeping you alive. And anything, any message, any interaction you have, subconsciously, if that interaction does not tell your brain how it's going to help you survive and thrive, your brain starts to conserve calories. It off. Whether it's a conversation, a message, of which we get 3,000 commercial messages a day. Imagine if your brain retained all of those. You'd be on 
overdrive. So your brain helps you survive by cutting out the noise. And what we found is that organizations, nonprofits, and brands have a really hard time sending out clear messages to people. So they either try to be really creative and say, come and learn and thrive and grow. And it's really pretty and they, you know, they put it in their best email template. But your brain just goes, well, those are all great things. But what does this even mean? And it, that might even happen on such a subconscious level you don't even realize it. And so we have learned that story is a sense-making device for the human brain. So think about when you go to a movie or get into a good book, you're completely engaged and involved. You're dedicated to seeing if the hero wins the day or gets the girl. Um, it's one of the only times in our human life that we can do that. And so story is a sense-making device. So we are going to use story at the next convening to help you all tell good, clear messages for your district, your organizations, and what you're trying to accomplish in the city. So I'm excited to see you there. She's going to teach us how to communicate. Next slide. If you don't know about this, you have to put it on your calendar. May 1st is the official anniversary date of San Antonio, the 300th anniversary. Um, so it is the tricentennial day of reflection. There is going to be a multi faith gathering of sounds and blessings and words on the main plaza downtown, 6.30 to 8.30, and it's free and open to the public. Free parking on Tuesdays downtown, and you can do park and ride as well. It's going to be beautiful. There's a lighting of flame. And at 2018 military time, which is also 8.18, the entire city is invited to turn on all their lights in celebration for that 300 years. So that's all going to be happening that night. I really encourage you to come. Um, it's, it's going to be beautiful. So you're going to be hearing more about it, but you know, you're the faith community, and I want you to know first, right? All right, so uh, our last slide here, or pretty close, between the two of you, which is younger. Just turn, okay, pick a card, any card. The youngest gets to choose. Brett Smith. Brett Smith, right over here. Thank you. And now we have a couple of folks meeting the mayor for lunch. Um, I think that's about it. Uh, we do have one more polling question. So get out your phones one more time. It's 1129 and we said 1130. So the question is in statement. Thank you so very much for all that you do in the world. And thank you for coming today. Uh, please check all of the following that apply. So um, I think you put in A, B, C, D, right? So A, you have to put a comma. Did somebody say that? Put a comma. Um, today was totally worth my time. That's an A, comma. Next time, I'll be here first to get the door prize. B, that's a comma. I wish I had brought others with me to hear this. C, that's a comma. I heard about today through email notices and invitations. That's a D. Or, I heard about today through another person. That's an E, comma. The spring and summer 2018 convening was on my calendar. F, that's a comma. I'm not sure convenings are right for me. That's G. About the rest of you, but I have an urgent action alert on my text. Oh my goodness! It worked! Did everybody get one of those? Okay, so urgent action alerts are things that we need desperately every day. Every day. So this one is on immigration. They really need some folks to help welcome people at the bus station and airport. They give them backpacks with basic things that they need and they could use some donations to help with that. And the link will tell you exactly how to do that and who to talk to. 
Yes, sir, it's 1131. Thank you all for coming. Please take piles of strawberries. You can take other fruit, but there's a lot of strawberries back there. <laughs>